Okay, we've already looked at how we deal with the revaluation itself, but what happens if after one year uh, the land or the property is sold by the subsidiary for a gain? Um, so let's first look at the situation is when the revaluation occurred within the subsidiary. So this is based on the previous example and what we have here is a parent with $700 of investment asset, $700 of share capital, $250,000 of land, $400,000 of other assets, $45,000 of deferred tax liability, which relates to the revaluation of the land, $300,000 in share capital, $200,000 retained earnings, $105,000 in revaluation surplus, uh, which was revaluation upwards of the land by $150,000. So again, I'm just going to color the parent accounts in red, a light sort of red color, and the subsidiary accounts in a blue color, just so we know which entries refer to which entity. So when the sale actually happens, and we're going to say the sale happened for $300,000, so we debit cash 300, we credit land 250, and we credit gain on sale of 50. The gain on sale simply being the difference between what we received and what we sold the land for. And that all happens in the subsidiaries accounts. So that's not a worksheet consolidation adjustment. So we're just going to actually make this entry in here. So cash goes up from zero to 300. Land goes from 250 to zero. And again on sale, and I'm just going to take it directly into retained earnings. I know it's cheating a bit, but it'll serve our purpose. So I'm going to So that's in the subsidiary, subsidiaries accounts. Now there will be a tax effect from that, and I'll just put in the entry and then I'll explain it. So we have a uh, debit de tax expense 15, debit DTL 45 and credit cash 60. Um, so let's make these effects happen. So cash ends up at 240. The deferred tax liability disappears. And retained earnings, because we're going to take the expense straight into retained earnings, decreases by 15. So what's actually gone on here? Well, the taxable profit is your $300,000 sale price less than $100,000 cost because the revaluation is not generally accepted by tax authorities. So even though from the from an accounting point of view it was carried at 250, from a tax point of view it's at 100. So the taxable profit is $200,000 on it and with a 30% tax rate gives you 200 200 by 30% gives you $60 make that look the same. So that's where that 60 comes from. Now, technically that would, would go credit tax payable and then you would pay off that payable and that would be a cash outflow, but I've gone straight to the cash outflow. The accounting profit on the other hand is $50. And $50 and at 30%, gives you 15 and that's where the 15 tax expenses come from and the difference is just picking up the creation of the deferred tax liability before and actually getting rid of that deferred tax liability so let's put in oh we've already put in those accounts and so what we're left with is the consolidation entries and we have debit share capital of 300 debit retained earnings now retained earnings is at 235 now but remember you're looking for pre-acquisition retained earnings which is 200 you want 
debit revaluation surplus. Just because the asset has gone doesn't necessarily mean the revaluation surplus is gone. Um, it may have been rolled into retained earnings and there, therefore you need to check what's actually happened there. But in this case, it has been left in revaluation surplus. And we credit investment, which is 700. And the difference is goodwill as normal, which is 95. So we go through and share capital drops off, retained earnings and revaluation surplus. There's no fair value adjustment because the revaluation happened in the subsidiaries accounts. Goodwill is increased to 95 and investment is decreased to zero. And what we're left with is a group with $240,000 in cash, no land, which it doesn't have anymore, no investment because it's just within the group, $400,000 of other assets, $95,000 of goodwill. No deferred tax liabilities because that relates to the land and that land has now gone. Share capital is only the parent share capital which is getting picked up. The retained earnings is only picking up the net effect of the gain on sale, which is the 50 minus the 15. Revaluation surplus is gone because that's pre-acquisition equity. Fair value adjustment was not relevant for this particular path. And we end up with $735,000 in net assets.